Hey, it's Yay for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how to knit a chunky seed stitch cowl. So this is a very quick and easy beginner-friendly project. And the first thing that you're gonna need for this project is the free written pattern, which you can get by clicking the link in the description box below. Or you can purchase a large print ad-free printable PDF version of the pattern with a full photo tutorial also linked in the description box down below. So I am using a number six super bulky yarn for this project. However, if you want to use a different yarn weight, this is a project that is, first of all, you can make it in a custom size, and secondly, um, exact gauge is not critical. So this is kind of designed for any gauge, but I am doing it with super bulky yarn. And as long as you cast on an even number of stitches, you can do this at any gauge you want with any yarn you want. It just won't have the same look as the very chunky yarn because I am, I'm using this really thick yarn for a really chunky, extra squishy texture. If you do this in a thinner yarn, then it will still be very pretty. It will just be a not, you know, not quite as puffy and squishy type of texture. It will have, you know, more drape to it and lay very smoothly as opposed to being fluffy and chunky and squishy in the thicker yarn. So this yarn is Wool Ease Thick and Quick by Lion Brand Yarns and the colorway I have is called Blossom. I have a whole bunch of this and I also have a circular knitting needle because we are knitting this in the round. This is a US size 11 eight millimeter knitting needle and this one is about 36 inches long so you need a needle that is no more than 36 inches long for this if you get one that's too long unless it's like way 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 too long and you use the magic loop method um, if your needle is too long then all the stitches will not fit on the circumference of your needle so i also have some yarn needles blunt tapestry needles and a pair of scissors, a measuring tape, and you will also need a stitch marker that can fit onto the circumference of your needle. So we're going to be slipping a stitch marker. If you don't have a stitch marker that's big enough for this needle, then you can always use a loop of yarn in a different color, like just a slip knot with little short ends, slide it on there and you can use that as your stitch marker instead if you don't have a regular stitch marker that will fit. So now that we have all of our supplies, we can get started with the knitting. So here is the end of my yarn and I'm going to start with a knitted cast on. It's also called knitting on, which is a way of making your cast on that kind of has a little more stretch to it than the typical long tail cast on. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of a tail for weaving in and I'm gonna make a slip knot and I'm going to place it on my left hand needle like so. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to insert the needle into that slip knot as if to knit. So we're gonna be knitting into the previous stitch on the needle and then taking that new loop and putting it on the needle again. So I'm going to knit through that slip knot, but I'm not going to slip the original slip knot loop off of the needle. I'm just gonna leave it there and kind of stretch the loop that I just pulled through. And now I'm going to stretch that loop pretty far out and I'm gonna slip it over the tip of my left needle as if my needle is inserted into that loop as if to knit. And then you can kind of pull on the yarn a little bit to make it more snug. But then that way the needle is already inserted into this loop so that we can cast on the next stitch out of this loop. So now I'm going to knit through the loop that I already have my needle inserted into kind of stretch on that, pull it out so that it is long. And then again, I'm gonna lift it up over the left needle so that my right needle is still inserted into that loop as if to knit, and then just kind of tug on the yarn to make it snug against the needle. Again, I'm gonna knit through the stitch, stretch it out, lift it up over the needle, not your cable, just the stitch. And then again, 
knit through that loop, stretch it out, and lift it onto the needle. And this is a relatively quick cast on to work as long as you're not flopping your cable up over the top. Um, and this will give us a slightly stretchier edge on the lower edge of, of our cowl. So I'm going to continue casting on in this manner until I have a total of 68 stitches. All right, so I've cast on all 68 stitches and I have slid the end where I started my slip knot up onto my right hand needle. And now what we need to do is we're going to switch needles. So I'm gonna take the needle that we just finished adding stitches to and put it in my right hand and the needle with the yarn tail goes in my left hand. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to add the stitch marker to the right hand needle and when we get to the beginning of each round we will slip the stitch marker to know that we have finished that round and then we'll keep going. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our cast on edge is not twisted. You want the edge of the work to be all the way around um, on the same side of the needle. So we don't want it to be like this so that the edge does not always stay inside that circle. We want it to be following the same edge all the way around. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start knitting round one. So this is probably going to be the hardest round, not because it is hard, but because we're working into the cast on. So I'm gonna kind of scoot some stitches up the right hand needle. And what we're gonna do is we're going to knit the first stitch and purl the second stitch. So we're going to be repeating that sequence of knit one, purl one, all the way around. And the reason that this is slightly harder with the cast on is because you have to keep scooting them up. And the cast on edge, when it is directly on the needle, doesn't have as much give in it and so it doesn't like to slide up the needle on its own. So we're going to knit one purl one, knit one, purl one, all the way around until we get back to that stitch marker. All right, so I am back to the marker. That was my last stitch. And I'm going to slip the marker to my right hand needle by just sliding it over onto the other needle tip. So that is the end of round one. And before we go on to round two, I want you to lay it down and check again to make sure that it's not twisted because when you're working round one, it can still get twisted because the join part is only held together just by that one strand of yarn that goes from the last stitch of the cast on to the first stitch of the new round. So that is why you have to check again to make sure that it is not twisted anywhere in your cast on edge. And once we have established that it is not twisted, we can move on to round two. So for round two, we're gonna do the reverse of round one, which is to purl one, knit one around. So we're going to purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one. And we're gonna do that all the way around until we get back to the marker. All right, so that was the last stitch. We're back to the stitch marker. So again, I'm gonna slip it to my right needle by just sliding it over the tip of the right needle. So those are the only two rows that we're gonna be working for this pattern. We're gonna be repeating rows one and two until the cowl is the length that you want. And these two rows are what create that bumpy seed stitch texture from all of the purl stitches. So I'm gonna continue repeating rounds one and two until the cowl is the length that I want it to be. All right, so I have finished knitting my cowl. I actually have two stitches left on the last round, but at this point my cowl is about 12 inches from the cast on edge all the way up to the base of the stitches that are sitting on my needle. So now I am ready to bind off and it doesn't even matter which round you end with. You can end with either round in the stitch pattern and it will still work out either way just fine. So that was the end of my last round. I'm gonna remove the stitch marker 
And then I'm going to bind off all the way around. So I'm going to knit the first stitch. I'm going to knit the second stitch. Then I'm going to insert my left needle tip into that first stitch that I knit, lift it up, and pass it over the second one. So then again, I'm going to knit the next stitch, take my left needle tip, lift the first stitch over the second one and off the tip of the needle. And um, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're doing this kind of loosely. You don't want to pull it too tight because if you do, then it will, um, it will make the edge kind of shrink up and it won't lay flat. So I'm going to continue binding off like this all the way around. Now if you do have a problem with binding off too tightly, then you can use the suspended bind off, which is very similar. It does the exact same thing, but it is a way of keeping those loops looser and not letting them get quite as tight if you pull on them too much. So for the suspended version of the bind off, we knit the next stitch, lift the first stitch over the second one with the left needle tip, but we're not going to let that, that loop fall off of the left needle tip. We're going to leave it sitting on there. So there's our bound off stitch, but we're going to leave it sitting on the left needle tip and we're going to bring the right needle tip over to the next stitch, knit through that. And then we can lift both the one that we bound off previously and the stitch we just knit into off the needle. Again, we will insert the left needle tip into that first stitch, lift it up and over the second one and off the right needle, but still holding onto it with the left needle, we'll knit through the second stitch and lift both the stitch we just knit and the previous bound off stitch off the left needle. So again, I'm going to lift the first stitch over the second one with the left needle, leave it on the left needle, knit through the following stitch, take both of those off the needle, and then continue to bind off that way all the way around until I only have one loop left on my right needle. So that will be all the way around the whole edge till we get back to here. All right, so there is my last bound off stitch. And now what we're going to do is we're going to leave a bit of a tail, not anything super long, but you want it to be at least six inches, preferably closer to eight inches long. And we're going to go ahead and cut the yarn there. And that is pretty much the end of the knitting. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take that loop that's on the needle. We're going to gently pull on it until the end of the yarn comes out. So we are done with the needles. And now you can see we have this edge that has a pretty decent amount of give in it. And that will help keep the cowl edge pretty flexible without being, you know, too stiff or eliminating the stretch. So now we need a yarn needle. And for a yarn this thick, you're going to need a pretty big yarn needle. So I like to use this one which has a pretty decent sized eye and um, we're going to weave in this end but before we do that we're going to finish by closing up this gap so i'm going to thread the end of this tail into the yarn needle and then we are going to close the gap between the last stitch we bound off and the first stitch we bound off so first we're going to come over here and find the first stitch or, you know, the loop, I should say, that has kind of been folded down this way. This loop that is still standing upright, that is a stitch in the last row. This one is the first one that was bound off because it is the first one that is laying over. So I'm going to insert my yarn needle from front to back under both loops of that stitch, which is the first stitch in the bind off edge. So now I can pull that through from front to back. And what we're doing is we are recreating the look of another stitch around this edge to make the edge look totally seamless and have like an invisible join at the end. So now this is what our piece looks like at this point. And I'm going to bring my yarn needle. You can see how we brought the yarn across the front 
through this stitch, now it's coming out this way, we're going to bring it back across this way, right down through the stitch that we came out of the last time. So, this is not just one strand of yarn here. We are going down through the loop that we bound off the last, and then we are also going down through the back of the stitch that is underneath it. So that is where we are inserting our needle, and that will help hide the join where we are joining the beginning and end of this edge together. So now we can pull that needle through and then we're just going to tug on the yarn just to even it out and make sure that that fake stitch that we just made in the edge is about the same size as the rest of the bind off stitches. So that joins the beginning and end of our bind off and it hides the join at the same time. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and weave in this tail and the tail from where we started. I also have a couple of tails from where I joined a new ball of yarn. And once we weave in all of our tails, then we can block our cowl. So as long as you weave in your ends securely, you don't have to make a knot, but I'm going to go ahead and make a knot anyway on the back of the edge, just wrapping the yarn around the needle one time and pulling it tight. And that will make sure that the edge of our, um, our join, our bind off join, never comes loose and then I can proceed to weave in all of my tails. Now once I've woven in all of the yarn tails, then I'm going to block my cowl, and I have an entire video on blocking if you would like more information on that, but in this particular case, the yarn that I am using is mostly acrylic with some wool in it. So I'm going to go ahead and steam block this very well, and blocking the fabric can help to give it as much drape as it is capable of um, having at this gauge and with this thickness of yarn. And I want a pretty good amount of drape in this cowl because it is so thick and you don't want it to stand up perfectly straight around your face. So um, be because this is so tall, we want it to be able to kind of scrunch down a little bit and drape nicely around the neck and not be too stiff. So I'm gonna go ahead and weave in the rest of my tails, and then I'm going to steam block my cowl, and then my seed stitch cowl is finished. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you make this project, let me know how it turns out for you in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching.